About 10 or 15 years ago, office supply companies started marketing a machine they said would do away with the need for lots of other machines. They combined into one thing, your printer, and your fax machine, and your scanner, and your copier. Remember? The printer, copier, scanner, fax machine. One thing, the all-in-one that would do all of those tasks. And everybody bought one because it seemed like such a reasonable idea, and they were so economical. And then everybody realized that the new all-in-one machines, the printer, copier, scanner, fax, technically might be capable of sort of doing all of those things, but it did none of those things particularly well. So if your office is like my office, there's now probably a beat down all in one machine clunker stuffed somewhere in a corner, consigned to do one of the things it was marketed to do, which it does sort of serviceably, and all of its other tasks have been relegated back to machines that can actually do that work, even if they just do that one thing. You can do one thing well, or you can do everything poorly. Today, the Pentagon made the announcement that its own printer, copier, scanner, fax sounds like a good idea but doesn't work contraption is finally, finally getting cut off. Today, I am also announcing my agreement with the recommendation of the Secretary of the Navy and the Commandant of the Marine Corps to cancel the expeditionary fighting vehicle. It fully executed the EFV, which costs far more to operate and maintain than its predecessor, would essentially swallow the entire Marine vehicle budget and most of its total procurement budget for the foreseeable future. The expeditionary fighting vehicle is a tank, you know, like a tank tank, but it is supposed to be a tank that swims. That was the idea. Imagine any problems with that? When the military initially started working on this thing in 1996, they said their goal was to build a tank boat thing that would run for 70 hours before anything major on it would break down. 70 hours, that was their goal. Getting nowhere near that goal, they later reduced the goal from 70 hours without a breakdown to 43 and a half hours without a breakdown. By 2007, they could still only get the thing to run for four hours without something catastrophically breaking down. Right now, the goal, the goal is to get the thing to operate disaster free for 16 point something hours. That's what it would take for this thing to pass minimal standards at this point. 16.4 hours. That's it. That's as long as it would have to run without something really bad happening. Something like what's been happening, which is the thing leaking or driving itself off course inexplicably. Even if the thing didn't break down though, even if it worked as directed, even if it worked like a charm the way it's supposed to work, doesn't work. It's the printer, copier, scanner, fax that cannot print, copy, scan, or fax problem. In order to swim, the little contraption that couldn't needs to have a flat bottom for buoyancy. This thing is not a catamaran, it's a tank. It needs a flat bottom to be able to swim. But having a flat bottomed hull is exactly the thing we stopped allowing for any of our land vehicles in our current wars, because you really, really need them to have a V-shaped hull, because the V-shaped hull makes the vehicle capable of protecting the people inside it from things exploding outside it when it's driving around. So because the thing can swim, it really can't drive safely on land. Oh, and speaking of driving, in order to reach what the Pentagon says is its target speed, this thing needs to be driven on very, very good roads, well-paved areas, because it has really low ground clearance and it doesn't like going over bumps. This therefore limits the Marines to using this vehicle in well-paved places with really good infrastructure, places with good roads that extend right out to the beaches. Very handy if our next war is in Malibu. The tank boat also requires places that don't mind that we're coming because it is incredibly, incredibly noisy. The idea of a tank that is also a boat is a cool idea in the same way that sharks with laser beams on their heads is a cool idea. But let's note for a moment that the Marines have not mounted an opposed amphibious assault of the kind that gives rise to the imagined need for something like this since the autumn of 1950, as in the Truman administration. This thing has not just been revealed suddenly now as a bad idea. It has been clear that this was a bad idea for a very long time. Originally, they planned to get a thousand of these vehicles for nine billion dollars. So far, they've spent three billion dollars and have none of them that work properly. And if the Defense Department doesn't put the kibosh on it, the new budget provides another 13 billion dollars to try to get roughly half of the original planned number of them, maybe. 
The it slices, it dices, it juliennes, it prints, it copies, it faxes contraption is a textbook example of military spending with no point. Right down to the fact that back in its darkest days, when it could only go four hours without pooping out, the defense contractor who made these things got $60 million in performance bonuses for their work up until that point. Great job, you guys. It sucks. Here's $60 million in bonuses. So now Defense Secretary Bob Gates wants to cut it. And this is now a test, a great test. Republicans still have to work out amongst themselves whether or not their newfound opposition to spending includes even spending that's on military stuff. When the Republicans said they wanted to cut $100 billion this year before they said it would, okay, maybe be more like $50 billion, they explicitly said they, those cuts would not include any cuts to military spending. So this is my question. Who's going to be the first idiot to complain about cutting this thing, about cutting this float in the bathtub toaster oven, this food processor, paper shredding, metal detector, all in one waffle iron, nothing doer? Who is going to be the first member of Congress to complain about cutting this pointless contraption? Because even though it does worse than nothing, it's magic military dollars that can never be cut. Who is going to complain about this? This is a stupidity test for Congress. Who wants to take this test? 